morning, guys. As you can see, we are not in Missouri anymore. We are headed to the home of the Kentucky Derby. Let's go, it should be a lot of fun. I am at Churchill Downs and I'm gonna go take the tour. Attention ladies and gentlemen of the museum, if you are signed up for our next historic walking tour, please make your way to the large oval room in the center of the museum. That is where we'll be leaving in approximately two minutes. Take all the pictures and videos you guys would like to, okay? Well, I'm I will not be offended if you're not going to get the pictures for the world. You just take a picture and video. That's totally fine. You won't be offended. So, but we must stay together as a group, okay? We must stay. We're not allowed to go out and walk around just ramp off. So, please stay together as a group. Take all the pictures and videos you guys would like. Please, I encourage all questions if you ever have any questions. There are no dumb questions. Tours go by a little bit better. There's a little bit of engagement back and forth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Welcome, folks. Welcome. You're welcome. How are you? I'm awesome. Get out here. Way back in 1872, when Louisville native Colonel Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr. took a trip to Europe to watch the Epsom Derby. At the time, the Epsom Derby was the world's most preeminent horse race. Let's go over here and read this cover for a little bit. It's right here. Colonel Clark, who went over to Europe to watch a horse race called the Epsom Derby, Colonel Clark also was the grandson of William Clark of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. So he went over there and watched that race, and he fell in love with the idea of the Epsom Derby. So when he got back to Louisville, he wanted to replicate something like the Epsom Derby back here in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. But the only problem was Colonel Clark was flat broke. He had no money, just like a lot of us, right? But luckily, his uncles, the Churchill brothers, owned this piece of property right here. It was 80 acres way back when in 1873. They worked out a deal, they leased him the land, and he began building the racetrack in 1873. So I want to point up to the green nameplates up here. All these green nameplates. So the one all the way to the far end by those green staircases over there that not a single one of us can see. You're going to have to trust me on this. The very first derby was in 1875. It was won by a horse called Aristides. Aristides beat 13 horses in front of a crowd of 10,000 fans. So it just a couple of Saturdays ago, we had 147,000 people here on Derby Day. So 10,000 fans is not a very big crowd by today's standards, but back in 1875, that was a fantastic crowd to get together to watch anything, but such a horse race in Kentucky. So Kingman has a distinction that will never be broken. He has the slowest time ever for a Kentucky Derby winner. <laughs> we call the Kentucky Derby here the greatest two minutes in sports because it generally takes about two minutes and two seconds to run the race. My friend Kingman ran it back in 1891 in 2 minutes and 52 seconds. He made it one of the greatest 3 minutes in sports. <laughs> in fact, the next day in the local paper, the headlines, they called the race the Kentucky Funeral Procession. <laughs> Not the best headlines when you try to build popularity for a horse race. The issue with such few participants in the early 1890s was the Kentucky Derby began as a mile and a half horse race. 
So the Derby, I don't know if you know this or not, but it's only for three-year-old horses. You only have once in a lifetime shot to run the Kentucky Derby. So a three-year-old running a mile and a half, first Saturday in May, a lot of owners didn't want their horse to run that far. It was just too far for the three-year-old, young three-year-old to be running. So, in 1902, the little, new Louisville Jockey Club took ownership of the track. They bought the track, and the first thing they did was they hired a man named Colonel Matt Wynn. Colonel Matt Wynn was 14 at the time of the very first derby. He was in attendance for that derby and all the derbies leading up to 1902 when he was named general manager at Church of Adams. So the very first thing Colonel Matt Wynn did was he cut the race back to a mile and a quarter, in which it still stands today. Colonel Matt Wynn also was one of those fellas to where he could sell sand in the desert. He could just sell anything to anybody. And he had the forethought of making the Derby what it's become today. With the big hats, the beautiful women, the heads of state, the celebrities. He wanted the world to focus on Louisville, Kentucky, on Kentucky Derby Day. So we'll start walking this way, please. You'll see Regret. Regret won the 1915 Kentucky Derby. And Colonel Matt Wynn stated that Regret, the 1915 Derby, was his most significant derby of his lifetime. So Regret was undefeated back in 1915, the most popular horse in North America. If you knew horse racing in 1915, no doubt you knew who Regret was. Obviously entered and won the Kentucky Derby in 1915, becoming the first Philly, first female racehorse to win the Kentucky Derby. In fact, we've only had three Philly win the Kentucky Derby in 148 years. The other two were in the 80s, Genuine Risk and Winning Colors. But Regret was the very first Philly to win the most to win the Kentucky Derby and the most significant derby of Colonel Matt Wynn's lifetime, which says a lot, because he was here for 78 consecutive derbies. Regret, you might think that's a strange name. So the poor thing, the way she got her name was, the owner paid to have a live foal bred, paid to have a baby horse born, basically. So he was hoping it was going to be a boy horse, a colt. Turned out when she was born, it was a filly, it was a girl. So he was regretful that it wasn't a boy, so he named her Regret. <laughs> the joke was on him. Girl power won out in the end. I'm sure he learned to love her after winning the derby, I would think. Triple Crown, that's right. Triple Crown, it's 13 Triple Crown winner in 148 years. So Bart was technically our very first one. Triple Crown was not called the Triple Crown until 1930, over my right hand shoulder here. He got Fox for the 1930 Triple Crown. He's also, Gal Fox is also the only Triple Crown winner to ever sire another Triple Crown winner. So Gal Fox won the 1930 Triple Crown, his direct son. It was Omaha in 1935. Only time that's ever happened. You might have noticed Omaha's not in gold. I just stated he won the Triple Crown. That is a fact. I think we're overthinking a little bit. It's just been faded by the sun. He's just going to paint. That's all. <laughs> Welcome to the Twin Spires of Churchill Downs. The Twin Spires were built in 1895. It's the oldest part of the racetrack. They are a national historic landmark, which means we cannot make any changes or alterations to the Twin Spires without approval from the federal government. So what I'm telling you is, is they'll never change. So yeah, I mentioned that's the oldest part of the racetrack, built in 1895. Funny story about the Twin Spires. The man that actually built the Twin Spires there never sat underneath the Twin Spires. He said he was always scared to death that the horses thundering down the stretch were going to collapse and then drop it on top of everybody's head. That's a true story. <laughs> I mean, he had no confidence in his work, did he? Boy, was he wrong. They've been standing for 127 <laughs> years, still standing strong. So Colonel Matt Wynn, I'm talking about Colonel Matt Wynn. This is Colonel Matt Wynn right here, the fellow in the hat. He's basically the father of all of the traditions we know about the Kentucky Derby. The big hats, the celebrities, the run for the roses, the mint juleps, the University of Louisville March of Man playing my old Kentucky home. You name the traditions like Kentucky Derby, most likely Colonel Matt Wynn's the father of all those traditions. The man to his left, John Asher. He was a media relations man for Churchill Downs for many years and a general and a vice president of Churchill Downs. The two men never overlapped in life, but they were two of the same men. Love Churchill Downs, love Kentucky Derby, and love Louisville, Kentucky. Has everybody heard of the horse Secretary? Yes. If you have it, shame on you. <laughs> Secretary won the 1973 Kentucky Derby. Remember I told you about Kingman ran the Derby in two minutes and 52 seconds? Secretariat still holds the record as the fastest time ever for a Kentucky Derby winner. He ran the mile and a quarter Kentucky Derby in one minute, 59 and two fifths seconds. That is blazing fast. That record still stands from all the way back in 1973. After he set the record in the Derby, two weeks later he went to the Preakness. He set the record in the Preakness, which still stands today as the fastest Preakness ever. Three weeks after he set the record in the Preakness, he went to the Belmont State. He set a world record at the mile and a half distance on dirt in 1973. 
which in my opinion will never be touched. Two minutes and 24 seconds for a mile and a half on dirt. Never be touched in my opinion. He won the Belmont Stakes by 31 lengths. A length is a striding horse from nose to tail. You can fit 31 striding horses between secretary and second place finish for the Belmont. If you've never seen the race, you should spend two minutes on the way home, go on YouTube and watch the race and sound up. It is an incredible performance. Because one of the very first derbies of Colonel Matt Williams, Vice President, or Vice President here, somebody gave the winning trainer, uh, the winning owner a rose after he won the derby. And he's like, that's a cool, that's a kind of a, the rest is history. That's right, that's right. So that's where it all, where it all began. So welcome to Church of Mounds Racetrack. Look at you guys right here. This racetrack, the finish line is the white pole with the gold ball on top, right here in front of us. The finish line, the finish line is a one mile oval. The racetrack is 85 feet wide. Now I gotta ask you guys a question, I gotta play along. How deep do you all think this racing surface goes down? How deep do you think it goes down? Five inches, we heard five inches. Six inches. Right, but how deep is it? All, all the way down, how deep? Eight inches. Four or five. Four or five. Twenty-five feet deep. That's right, good job. Yes. Twenty-five feet deep. But that's incredible, right? Twenty-five feet deep. The most incredible thing about that, in my opinion, is, is they built that, they dug that thing out 25 feet deep in 1875. Let me remind, there were, there were no gas engines in 1875. They dug this out by hand. 85 feet wide, one mile oval, 25 feet deep. Imagine the work it took back in 1875 to dig out an area this big. But we call it a dirt surface. It's made of 75% sand, 23% silt, river dirt from the Ohio River, and 2% clay to keep it all bound together. That's, you better believe it, right? Yeah, it's changed since then. Yep. Why? Why so deep? For drainage, that was it. That was it. All right, couple couple sections up here. See these two levels with the, underneath that, that that light fixture right above us, right here. Those two levels with the green rod on railing on right above us here. That's Millionaire's Road. So directly underneath that light fixture right there, right there in the corner, Queen Elizabeth watched the Kentucky Derby in 2007 for right there in that spot. Tom Brady used to bring the New England Patriots football team here every year. Now he brings the, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team here every year. Aaron Rodgers brings the Green Bay Packers offense here every year. Michael Jordan, all the movie stars, actors and actresses, musicians, everybody, that's where they're going to be in Millionaire's Row. It costs several thousand dollars a person to sit up there on Derby Day. So we run for three months and three weeks a year here at Churchill Down. So we don't just run on Derby Day. Any other week besides Derby Week, you can sit up in Millionaire's Row for $42 a person, you get all-you-can-eat buffet for three hours, inside, climate controlled. It's a fantastic place to watch the races up there. Very affordable outside of Derby Week. We run the months of May and June. We're, our our season is right now. We run the months of May and June. We run three weeks in September and the entire month of November. Wednesday through Sunday. You guys like to take a picture of Harris there? Four for one of the very first Kentucky Derby. So, yeah. If your horse wins the Triple Crown, it immediately becomes worth about 150 to 200 million bucks. And sadly, if your horse wins the Triple Crown, you'll never race again, never run another race. And it's kind of disappointing. I'd love to see the Triple Crown winners keep running and racing. We could have had we could have had American Pharaoh and, um, and and justify racing against each other, but sadly that couldn't have happened because they wanted to breathe. The reason why they won't race them again after they win the Triple Crown is because that's a 200 million dollar lottery check waiting to be cashed. One bad step could ruin it all. So. It's disappointing to me. I'd love to see him keep racing, but just not the way it go. Guys, if y'all ever make it back to Churchill Downs, please stop by the museum, ask for Stan. You guys have been great. I hope you have a great rest of your trip. Thank you guys for visiting. Follow me inside. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thanks for visiting. Thank you. This was the coolest tour. If you're in town in Louisville, you should come take it.